What's up guys? It's Ian here, back today with another video, and today I'm here to bring you a new version of the do-it-yourself pulley system for tricep pushdowns video. This video is meant to be a new version of my old do-it-yourself pulley system video with better audio and clearer instructions. That video was really popular for whatever reason. Maybe this is a popular genre of YouTube video, and I just wanted to give you a more in-depth, more detailed breakdown of exactly how I set this up. So this video breakdown is going to have roughly the same parts as the other video. This tutorial is going to show you how to set up a single cable, one pulley, pulley system for tricep pushdowns, face pulls, or really any exercise that you could perform with a single cable with one pulley and a high anchor point. If you have a mid-level anchor point or a floor height anchor point, it really does open up more options as far as what other exercises you can perform. At home, I only have a pull-up bar as my anchor point. Point, but if you did have a ground level pulley anchor point, it would open up other exercises such as cable curls and other options as well. The main benefit of building a pulley system at home is going to be that building a pulley system out of parts that you can find at a hardware store is going to be a lot cheaper than buying a pre-made pulley. You can save a lot of money by doing this yourself. Without further ado, let's get into the breakdown of the items that I used for this pulley system setup. For this setup, I started off with seven feet of 3 sixteenths inch aircraft cable coated with plastic. This was about $1.29 per foot for a total of $9.03. Although the length of cable that you use will really depend on the height that your pull-up bar is off the floor. And I'll get into that more later in the video. Next up, I had two 3 16th inch wire rope thimbles. These were $1.39 each. These are the little eyelets shaped kind of like a U and they're going to line the inside of your cable where you fold it, this is going to be the part that accepts the carabiner and prevents your cable from getting worn out. Two of those at $1.39 each, that equals $2.78. Next up, I had four 5 16 inch wire rope clips. These were $1.79 each for a total of $7.16. Note that the cable itself and the thimbles were the same size as each other, both 3 16 inches, but the wire rope clips were slightly larger at 5 16 of an inch. This is because the 3 16 size wire rope clips will only accept a single pass of cable through. So you can't fold the cable over and loop it around the thimble with a 3 16 inch wire rope clip. So this is a major key. Whatever size cable and thimble you get, those will match each other. But the wire rope clips want to be slightly bigger because the wire rope clips have to accept a double pass of the cable. When you're picking up these parts, be extra certain that your cable and your thimbles match in size. That's going to give you a nice tight fit between the thimble and the cable. But make sure that the wire rope clips are sized up slightly because as you'll see in the video when I put it together, each of the wire rope clips has to have a double pass through of the cable to cinch it down around that thimble and give you a usable loop to hook the carabiner onto. And last but not least, on our parts list is one two inch heavy duty swivel eye pulley. This was just $9.99 and there's just one of them. So the total cost of the pulley system itself was $28.96 pre-tax without the carabiners. I'm in California in the Bay Area. I feel like stuff is pretty expensive out here. Maybe if you have a bigger hardware store near where you are, maybe you can get cheaper parts. But in California, in the Bay Area, this came out to just slightly under $30 without carabiners and without handles. I'll try to demonstrate this setup with the fewest number of carabiners shown to show you how to set it up with limited resources. Although it is going to take at least three carabiners. For me, I have one carabiner hooked onto some paracords that I attach to my pull-up bar. Your second carabiner is going to go on the loading pin itself and attach that end of the cable to the loading pin, which is going to hold your weights. And then the third carabiner is going to attach the other end of the cable to whatever handle that you select. So that's three carabiners there. I use two lengths of paracord so that way in case one of my paracords breaks in the middle of my
my workout, I still have that insurance policy second paracord. These paracords have never broken, but I do feel a bit safer having two paracords on there, just in case one of them has a failure mid-workout. A few more things that I'll list off as I show you this video. The height of my pull-up bar off the floor is 76 inches. The height of my loading pin is 14 and a half inches, and the height of my loading pin with the carabiner that I used is 18 inches. It's a big carabiner, and you're actually going to need a pretty big carabiner to interface with the Rogue loading pin. The Rogue loading pin will not accept smaller carabiners. You just need the clearance to actually physically get the carabiner onto the loading pin. Otherwise, it just won't fit on. So that is one drawback about using a loading pin, but it is, in my opinion, probably the cheapest way that you can load plates easily at home if you don't have rubber floors. If you do have rubber floors, you can just tie a strap around the plate itself and then hook a carabiner onto the strap. I just can't afford to have the plate hitting my floor at odd angles because it will incur a large amount of damage to the floor. You can see that in the demo videos, I just have some camping pads that I've cut into two and I double layer them. I just set my loading pin onto those to prevent floor damage, but you can figure out your own solution to not damage your floors if you are working out at home. And I do make sure to set it down pretty softly in between each set. It's not like you're at a gym and you can just slam down the stack. Maybe you want to be nice to your floors. What I've found is that the rough loss of cable length on each end of the cable system due to the thimble fold over is roughly five inches. What that means is when the cable wraps around the wire rope thimble and goes through the wire rope clips and you fold it through there, you're losing about five to eight inches of cable on each end at minimum. So you've got to calculate that in your calculations when you determine the length of cable that you want to buy. And lastly, the hanging height of my rope with the carabiner on it is 21 inches. That's how I did the math and I determined that I wanted seven feet of cable. Although what you will see once I've set it up is that I actually bought too much aircraft cable. When I estimated the length of cable that I wanted, I actually slung a flexible measuring tape over the top of my pull-up bar and I basically measured from the top of my loading pin where that carabiner would sit all the way over the pull-up bar and to where I wanted my tricep pushdown handle to be. What I didn't account for was the seven inches of loss spanning from that paracord carabiner and pulley. And this is not only seven inches, but it's actually seven inches on both sides of the pull-up bar. Also factored into that seven feet of cable that I purchased was the fact that you'll lose roughly five to eight inches of cable on each end of the setup due to the fold over that you lose when you fold the cable over the thimble and feed it through those wire rope clips. That's unpreventable. I accounted for that and I ordered some additional length of cable, but I did end up with somewhere between one and two feet of excess cable in this setup because I didn't account for the height of my hanging carabiner and pulley. So when you go to do your own setup, make sure you factor in the height that the actual carabiner and pulley will hang to and then consider feeding a flexible measuring tape from the top of your loading pin through the actual cable pulley height and then down to where you want the top of your handle to rest. This is going to allow you to perform your tricep pushdowns standing. You can see that in my first draft of this setup, I was forced to perform a few reps kneeling, but then I thought about it and I just loosened the wire rope clips. I fed a bunch more of the cable through. I basically just shortened the cable until the tricep rope handle was sitting at the height that I wanted it at. And then I refastened the wire rope clips in the new desired position. As far as setting the wire rope clips around that thimble, be fairly certain that it is where you want it to because once you've bent it around the thimble, the cable may be permanently deformed. You can always make it shorter, right? Because the deformed portion will be further and further away from the center of the cable. But once you've shortened it, you might not be able to lengthen it again because the parts further away from the center of the cable will have already been deformed at that point. Hopefully this is making sense and you can kind of see in the video how I messed up my first go through and then I fixed it and adjusted it to make it be closer to the way I wanted it to be. And hopefully you don't make this mistake. So make sure you take all those measurements and account for the hanging height of the carabiner and pulley when you set this up at home. Since I don't have strong enough wire cutters at home to cut through 3 16 inch aircraft cable, 
I just tied my extra cable into a loop and put some masking tape around it. Maybe I will bring this to the hardware store one of these days and cut off that excess length. So now that I've listed off all the parts that I've accumulated here, I'm going to talk you through some best practices in terms of setting it up and putting the parts together. So first up, I like to take my wire rope clips and unscrew those bolts until they're pretty much all the way unscrewed. You don't actually want them to come off, but you basically want them unscrewed to the point where you have a good amount of space on the inside of the clip there. After that, I'm going to take the cable and I'm going to feed two of the wire rope clips onto that cable. Then I'm going to pull out a nice long length of it, maybe a foot or so, then fold it back in through those wire rope clips. So now you have a big loop and what you're going to do is make the loop smaller and smaller and then put the thimble in it. So you're going to pull that cable through the wire rope clips until they're cinched around that thimble. Then what you're going to do is you're going to hold the cable tight against the thimble with one thumb and forefinger and then screw down the innermost wire rope clip to hand tightness. This is basically going to cinch up the wire rope clips around that thimble. You can make some last minute adjustments here and get the cable exactly how you want it. If you ordered an exact length of cable, then you're gonna want that tail to be about as small as possible just to conserve the cable. I do like to leave at least half an inch or an inch sticking out of the second clip away from the thimble. So I like to have a little tail there. That's why you're going to inevitably burn about five to eight inches worth of cable length on each end of this setup because the cable is looping around that thimble and you have a little tail on the other side of your two wire rope clips. So I like to tighten that innermost wire rope clip to hand tightness and then I like to make final cable adjustments, tighten the second wire rope clip to hand tightness, alternately tighten them both to hand tightness until you're pretty sure that you have the cable where you want it and then you're going to grab that wrench and and do your final go around, get it really tight on there. You can pull on the cable a little bit on both ends, just see if there's any play and give it a few last cinches down with that wrench just to get it really tight and secure. So now we've set up one end of this apparatus. The most important thing is to stop here and actually feed the cable through the pulley. So make sure you feed the cable through the pulley after you've constructed one end of this setup. If you don't, you're going to either have to disassemble the pulley or disassemble one end of the cable setup. Make sure that you do that. This is a major key. So we've assembled one end of the cable. We basically have one eyelet to hook a carabiner onto. It's not really side specific. These are going to be identical ends here. And then we're going to feed the other end of the cable through the pulley. And now we have the pulley on the cable. At this point, we're going to assemble the opposite end of the cable in the same manner which we assembled the first end of the cable. So we're going to take our two remaining wire rope clips and we've pre-loosened those bolts on them to make them a little bit easier to install. We're going to slide both of those on. We're going to take about a foot or so of the cable, fold it back through the wire rope clips, make that cable loop a little bit smaller but still big enough to fit the thimble. Put that thimble on. We're going to hold the clips and the thimble and just pull out enough of the cable to where the thimble is loosely held on and then we're going to get the thimble as tight as we want it between our thumb and forefinger. We're going to situate that cable how we want it. Potentially here is where you can attach the other end of the cable to your loading pin or whatever you're anchoring it to and you can actually attach your pulley to where you're going to anchor the pulley and you can set the height that you're going to want your tricep rope attachment at. And here, you're going to pull out just enough cable to get the eyelet here sitting where you want it. Once you've set the cable length how you want it, I'm just going to repeat the process. Holding the cable tight between the thumb and forefinger around that wire rope thimble, pulling the extra length of cable through the clips, tightening the innermost wire clip around your thimble and cable, tightening it to hand tightness. So you're tightening that wire rope clip that's closest to the thimble to hand tightness first. That's basically going to trap the thimble in place. And then you're tightening the outer wire rope clip and then just alternate back and forth until you've tightened both wire rope clips to sufficient hand tightness. Make any final adjustments to the cable that you want. Under hand tightness, you will still be able to move the cable around. So make sure you keep that wire rope thimble and cable tight between the thumb and forefinger. And then once you've got that cable where you want it, tighten it down with the wrench. At this point, you've 
constructed both of your eyelets. You have the pulley on the cable. You can anchor that pulley to your anchor point. You've got both eyelets. You can carabiner one end of the eyelet onto the loading pin, carabiner the other eyelet onto your tricep handle attachment, whatever handle you have at home. Make any final last tightens with that wrench. Just make sure that those bolts are really tight because if they're not, the cable can slip out. I know that on the instructions on the wire rope clips, they actually tell you not to use it with coated cable, but personally, I've never had an issue with them. They have worked for me every time, and I feel like it would be more of an issue to use a raw, non-coated cable with a pulley just because that metal-on-metal -metal contact over time, I feel like that would create some issues. I've never had one of these clips come loose. I do tighten them like really severely, like they're all the way tight when I'm performing these tricep push-downs. They're super, super tight. I've never had any slippage with this setup. It's been quite a good setup for me. This is how my other pulley system is also set up. I actually built this pulley system fresh from scratch just for this video. I didn't manufacture the parts. You know, I bought the parts and I built this pulley system just for this video to show you again how I'm putting it together with better quality voiceover. I received some complaints about the audio from the last video and it was a very popular video and just showing that I do listen to the comment section. I do listen to your requests. I wanted to remake this video with better audio to see if I can help some more people put together a good quality home exercise setup. I've never had any issues. My pulley system has never come apart for me personally. So in this video, I showed you how to put it together. I talked you through some of the pitfalls, some of the issues that I had myself when putting it together. So hopefully you can avoid those issues and avoid buying excess cable, excess parts, stuff like that. Hopefully you don't fall into any of those pitfalls. If you watch this full video, you shouldn't because you'll see exactly where I messed up and how to mitigate those mistakes. This was a longer video. I felt like the first video was a bit rushed. It had music. This video is not going to have music. It's just going to be voiceover and video. So that way you'll see my thoughts all the way through the process and really get the most out of it. Hopefully this was informative. Hopefully it was useful. Comment down below if you found it useful. If I left anything out, definitely comment down below and I'll try to address those concerns. Thank you for watching this video and don't let anybody stop your gains.